Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about the, all the wonderful things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. And I have a guest here today to talk about Pet Fest, which is happening not tomorrow, but the week after tomorrow, happening September 15th. It's Pet Fest. So we'll have Megan Fath on here to talk more about that in a bit. So let's get things off with a little bit of weather. Let's see how your weekend's looking. It's going to have some, oh, looks like you have some of those areas of patchy smoke happening today with highs into the 85, lows into the 54. You can expect your highs on Saturday to uh, kind of dip down into the 70s. So you expect 70 uh, with lows into the 43 degree temperatures um, happening all weekend long going into next week. So it looks like some of the fall weather is starting to kick in. Of course, all those, uh, Morning Joe places, if you plan on going to get coffee, are starting to sell pumpkin spiced, all sorts of gimmicky stuff as well. So you guys can enjoy that. But let's kick, uh, let's talk about some things that are happening uh, in the local. Um, rabies, just so you guys know, rabies is uh, coming around again. Uh, you got to watch out for rabies because a rabbit bat was found in the rattlesnake area. If you have any pets that have been outdoors and have signs of rabies, um, you can call them at 406. 5541-7387. Again, that number is 5417387. Uh, still, exposure to ra uh, rapid bats can lead down a long, intensive medical procedure, and exposure isn't limited to bites. According to the Missoula Count City County Health Department, bats typically hang around areas where they can eat mosquitoes and can be uh, seen fluttering around at night near the rivers. They also are found on the outskirts of town and in undeveloped areas. Here are some of the signs. Weakness, stumbling, hanging around near the ground, or having trouble flying could be strong candidates for the destructive brain swelling virus known as rabies. Also, any bat that is active during the daytime may be also a red flag, so you can call them at 541-7387. This will help uh, prevent the spread of rabies, and a lot of times uh, the bites from bats are so fine you can't even tell whether or not a bat has bitten a pet of yours as well. So some of the signs, of, again, a weakness, odd behavior, in your pets, you can call the Missoula County Health Department about this. In state news, the Crow Tribal Court has issued an arrest warrant for Cribal, uh, tro, uh, Crow Tribal Chairman Elvin A.J. Not Afraid uh, after his administration failed to comply with a judge's order to pay outstanding funds owned, owed to the tribe's judicial branch. A uh, warrant uh, says any law enforcement officer in the Crow Indian Reservation to arrest the chairman and bring him before the tribal court. Last week, uh, covers up um, is the name. Ordered a tribal tribe's executive branch to release more than eighty-six thousand dollars from the tribe's general fund that is owed to the judicial branch for unpaid wages, contractor bills, and other debts. Uh, national news: uh, Unite the Right organizer Jason Kessler, uh, um, a Charlottesville. Uh, Virginia, and jury says that he must pay, uh, Jeffrey Winder must pay a, a fine of $1 for uh, assaulting uh, or Unite the Right organizer Jason Kessler. And just to give it a little bit of background, Charlottesville became a national hot topic when an armed rally organized by Jason Kessler turned deadly when the protesters were ran over by self-proclaimed white supremacist killing Heather Hare and injuring 19. Kessler was on a podium speaking for Unite the Right um, a day later, and protesters got too close, and one, of, one man, Jeffrey Winder, landed a punch. Winder, among several people who have been accused of committing assault or other crimes against Kessler around the time of Charlottesville rally, of them, Winder had faced most of serious consequences, with other cases having been resolved through either suspended penalties or community service. So that's what's happening in the national news. I'm going to throw it on over to a new art clip, courtesy of Steve Hunt, and this is going to be an art installation happening all the way until December 6th at the Missouri Art Museum. But here's a little taste, kicking off your first Friday art guide, and then when I come back, I'm going to have uh, Megan on here to talk about Pet Fest. Just give it a little couple seconds. All right, let me just. There we go.
Hello everyone, we're back here with Megan Pfaff and she is uh, with, she's the co-owner, kind of like co-creator right. of the Pet Fest, which is happening September 15th, happening from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the Missoula Fairgrounds. So yes. can you tell us a little bit more about this uh, 13th annual Pet Fest? Sure, so it's the largest one day adoption in Western Montana. Um, we have uh, six shelters and rescues coming from all over Western Montana with their animals to hopefully all be adopted out last year. We adopted out almost every animal that came to the event. Uh, we have businesses from around Missoula that are all focusing on your pets. Um, and then we have the wiener dog race, which is always wow. a big hit. Uh, people train their wiener dogs all year round to participate. Uh, and then lots of other fun contests like best dressed and the peanut butter lick. Um, and it's just a fun, free day for the community to come out yeah. and uh, bring pet food. Uh, all the shelters and rescues that come yes. to the event get to leave with that pet food. Yep. And the Humane Society, uh, many vendors and uh, many other organizations uh, are going to be there. Yes. Yeah, so we have almost 30 wow. vendors all together. Uh, you can come down and get your portrait with your pet, uh, face painting. We're going to have miniature horses and wow. a goat for petting. <laughs> <laughs> um, Animal Wonders will be there uh, doing an awesome presentation at noon. PetSmart's doing a training demo. So lots to come down for. We're going to have Baskin Robbins uh, ice cream. So, uh, you know. You cool. can come down just for the ice cream if you want. <laughs> and uh, I know that, uh, I mean, many of you at home may be uh, kind of looking for always something going on because there's a lot of stuff going on, especially right. this weekend from what I've seen online and everything. But, you know, there's always something going on. Um, summer's over uh, with all the, you know, Karis Park and all right. that down the lunch. Right. But this is a good way to get out and go to your Missoula County, uh, Missoula Fairgrounds to uh, support uh, your the pets. And you know, Missoula is a big dog town for sure. It definitely is, yes. Pets are a huge part of Missoula. So, And you can check out everything at petfest.net, has the list of all of our vendors, everything that's going on that day, and the times that all our contests are at. All right, so we also have a poster. Let me just take care of that and you can pull that out. And there it is. Pet Fest poster kind of gives you a detailed um, exactly what's going on, a rundown, but that's only a little tip of the iceberg of right. what you can expect from Pet Fest. Yes. And also, it's uh, kind of like a uh, you can adopt and you can right. just take your pet. Yeah, you can take your pet home that day, or you can, um, you know, a lot of people bring the pet that they want to make sure it's a good fit and they get to like interact oh. and they can take them on a walk and see how they do with the family rather than in that uncomfortable sometimes you know going into a shelter right. with them barking and you can't bring your pet so yeah. it's a great way to make sure that it's the right fit for your family and you guys uh, outgrew your last location, which is at Karis Park, which is right. where you had the Pet Fest before, but right. last year was the first year you did it at the fairgrounds. Right. And this year you're bringing it back. Yes, the fairgrounds is amazing. We have indoor and outdoor space, grass, cement. I mean, it's just such a perfect mix of yep. everything that we need and a lot of room for growth. Yeah, so. I mean, even they have that nice pavilion right there, so it's outside, but you're still covered. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so is there anything else you want to mention about this? Anything that I didn't hit upon? You know, just that it's a, a great day for your family to come out, uh, bring the animals. We really, really recommend bringing your pets. Uh, just make sure that they are up to date on all their vaccines and that they are leashed. Um, we actually had someone bring a leashed cat once, <laughs> a lizard. I mean, they people go all out and then uh, with the best dress, you know, come dressed with your pet. Nice. We have some really awesome prizes for the contest. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. If you want more information, go to petfest.net. Dot net. Um, then, then again, it's an eight days from today, which is September 15th, happening from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Go adopt your furry new friend. Yes. Um, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll be right back. We have plenty more show. America was not ready for aviation. I mean, we had, we had been pioneers in aviation, but we were woefully unprepared to take to the skies. So the Air Service, in fact, it's pathetic the number of planes that we started and the number of qualified pilots that we had at the beginning of the war. So our, our taking to the air and helping, assisting the Allies uh, was an enormous effort. And by the end of the war, we were actually 
a top-notch air service in comparison to uh, everybody else in, in the war. William Belzer was among the first Americans up there. He trained first with the French, or the French Escadrille, the Lafayette Escadrille, and then eventually uh, serves the, his, own, uh, his own army, his own air service. And here we see him as a young man, uh, having been decorated for his, uh, his uh, feats of valor in the air. Flying was dangerous. Flying was risky. Flying was, uh, was a novelty. Uh, imagine flying in an open cockpit. Imagine the temperature, how cold and wet. It was, it was France. It's always cold and wet. <laughs> starting to get some controversies back in September. By later in the month, Montana was in the national news and the wildfires here. And again, this emphasis on debate and how, what's the relationship between wildfires and logging? When you go to the opinion pages, that's where things get most polarized and we see things like this statement, lack of logging worsened wildfires. And we can find almost the exact opposite statement. Logging isn't the solution to our wildfire problem. So the, the question that we're confronted with is, you know, what's the balance? Where is the truth? What does our current scientific understanding say about these different perspectives? And I'm going to try and, and give you at least, at least my take on that tonight. Like if they ask, coming from like a good space and I'll definitely in, in, like tell them talk to them and of course people are going to ask questions for the past like few years I've been calling people out right when it happens I had my face painted once and I came back from Browning and this girl she's like a friend of mine but she looks at me and she's just like got your war paint on huh and I looked at her I was like it's not no you know she like apologized after just that initial trying to be funny, but it's like, you don't realize how extremely racist that is, and just like, saying it like that. In order to maybe try and change it, you have to say something. I think people have to really listen. Because no one wants to be told that they're racist when they're like so open or woke. You know, it could go in one ear and out the other, but I think a lot of people now are trying to learn take what you say to like to in consideration. Hey guys, there's a bunch of movies coming out this weekend and I'm kicking it off with The Nun. Hey, you guys are afraid of nuns? Ah, I, I, I guess I have no reason to be, unless you're like maybe like middle-aged and uh, you went to a Catholic school and you had nuns who beat the crap out of you. Let's start off. The day is nigh, and so can you, as we welcome an early horror craze to take hold of you during the season, because it is September, you know, horror, you know, they want to see maybe if it has likes and carries on through October. Anyways, um, you get what you pay for. These movies always have a horror cold open where you see, oh, I'm scared, followed by a, a good-looking protagonist. It's like, oh, I got to stop being so scared. I wonder how that's going to work. It's like, 
blah, blah, blah. Someone was scared. It's like, I got to go solve the reason why this person was scared. And then they go off. There's a lot of tension building and there's a lot of warnings and being like, don't you try to solve this scaring thing or I'm going to scare you. And then, you know, then, then they just keep moving forward and then the scary thing happens and there's like, I'm scaring you. It's like, no, please don't. I was like, I, I scared you. And then the person's like, okay, whew. That person scared me, but I'm going to overcome my fears and go off this first. Oh, how dare you overcome your fears on hunting me down? The movie's called The Nun, coming out this weekend. Enjoy. Next up, we got P is per Peppermint. Peppermint is a movie about a housewife who becomes badass. Sorry about the language. Um, remember the show Alias? Well, Jennifer Gardner is a household wife looking to get her groove back into this action franchise because... Um, a lot of times, uh, w what happened with her career is that she became a mom in a movie, and she hasn't really left that role until now. Uh, but uh, let's face it, Jennifer Garner has been uh, playing, unfortunately, the uh, the stereotype uh, disapproving mom in movies where just like, oh, no, you don't, um, for a while now. So... She was close to becoming the next female action star, but of course, if you've seen the movie Electra, you kind of like, kind of understand why she didn't become the next movie action star. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it at that. And those are some of the movies that are coming out this week, this week, this weekend. So you guys can either enjoy that or you can just skip it. It's completely up to you. It's a movie. Hooray! Anyways, let's uh, let's show you another movie that a kid made over our summer camp. So here is summer series Office Things. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, so what we have here is we got some city council stuff. Um, it's just a little bit, a little snid bit. Uh, most of the meetings last about 10 minutes a pop. So public safety and health, uh, the Missoula Police Department renewed responses for, from towing companies interested in entering an agreement with the Missoula City Police Department. Uh, needless to say, pro towing won the bid. Uh, they usually go with a low, lower bid. Uh, pro towing will be uh, basically uh, towing any vehicles involved in a incident and a criminal investigation, basically. So pro towing will take the cars over to uh, police impound for future investigations. So pro towing will, they'll be uh, voting on this on the consent agenda on Monday. Public Works, Hickory Street to McCorm Park is the capital improvement, pro 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 capital improvement project to upgrade Craig Lane. And I talk talked about this last week. It's the lane that basically connects uh, uh, Russell Street all the way through uh, to Orange Street. Um, there are many other streets as well, but this is a, a kind of like a corridor for people to get through there. They want to improve some pedestrian. They want to improve some bus stops for uh, mountain line bus transportation. So anyways, here is uh, Trey Monroe, city engineer, talking a little bit about this. Um, this phase is, is uh, pretty simple. It establishes what the road will look like uh, for lane widths to have um, bike and ped accesses on both sides. It also improves the entrance to McCormick Park. It brings the um, entrance elevation up to Craig Lane for better uh, site visibility and increases it to have uh, three lanes, two exit lanes, one left and one right. Um, it also provides two pedestrian uh, passages across Craig Lane connecting trails on the south side and there'll be um, pedestrian refuges on both of those crossings. So this was a, a capital improvement project that was 
um, approved in the past, and we are ready to construct this year as soon as the irrigation season is over. All right. So uh, some of the issues that they had with uh, moving forward is irrigation. Is uh, when they do a construction, they have to make sure it's just dry enough so they don't have to deal with a lot of the uh, eroding of the road and the sidewalk. So they're working on a way to get this going. So it seems like it's going to be happening sometime in the future. Um, so basically, uh, HM Concrete has been awarded the contract since honestly they're the only ones who have put in a bid for it they are working on the phase three van buren project right now though it's this phase will be will provide many uh to help pi bike and pedestrians and create bus stops for people cip budget uh will be six hundred and fifty five thousand seven hundred and eighty dollars and sixty two cents from transportation impact fees park Impact fees, city ass uh, assessments, and in-kind services. The bid passed and will go to the consent agenda on Monday. Uh, but of course, that concludes everything that was going on for the city of Missoula. There's a couple other things that they were talking about. There, uh, there wasn't a video available for, uh, I believe that was um, admin finance. Because when I clicked on admin finance, it didn't pop, a a pop up a video, and I didn't have time to present it for you guys. So I apologize for that. But I will have your full city council meeting on um, Wednesday. I'll give you a quick little overview report of what happened for Monday's meeting, which will happen next Monday. But of course, uh, you guys can find out more information about the city of Missoula by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. This is the great resource for you to find uh, permits. Um, if you want to complain about a uh, pothole that's filling up and if you want the city to do a quick patch job, you can go to this website and um, basically type in pothole in the search Missoula and it can bring you to a nice way of uh, filling out a form where on your street the pothole is and have your pothole filled within the week. It's that quick. Um, also, if you want to find out more information about Wake Up a Missoula, uh, you can go on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. It is a great resource for anything Missoula, interviews, um, videos, um, and more. All you got to go to, all you got to do is just Google uh, Wake Up Missoula. If you're interested in finding out more about MCAT, MCAT provides uh, local area nonprofits with 12 hours of um, free production, free video production, mind you. Um, if you are holding an event um, and you represent a nonprofit, we will go out and shoot it for you. Um, all you got to do is you can contact us through our website at MCAT.org. You can call us 542-6228, or you can email us MCAT at MCAT.org, and we can get everything that you need to sign up and be a part of the MCAT family. Ooh. All right, so uh, let's see. Where am I right now? And how many videos do I have left for you guys? I have one more uh, art clip for you guys, but I'm going to kind of skip ahead, and I'm going to start doing your art guide for the city of Missoula, kicking things off. It is First Friday. It is the first Friday of the month, and Missoula hosts uh, downtown fun for everybody who likes art or who just likes to wander around, maybe drink some free wine and uh, have some hors d'oeuvres and just kind of hang out. So design and art ex uh, exhibits at Radius Gallery, kicking things off. It's Thai Best. They look at high design and art art in inspired vignettes. This is a special show featuring the works of furniture designer Thai Best. Um, with the help of interior designer Becky uh, Broder, they've paired Ty's aesthetic of minimalist, uh, exquisite design with 11 artists of similar ink. Uh, the outcome is nothing less than jaw-dropping and overarching theme of obsession and desire and design. Moving on, we got another art happening at Cool Art Club First Friday pop-up. It's going to be at Compass Barbershop. Celebrate September's First Friday with Cool Art Club. They will be starting local artists and crafters with pop-up shop at the barbershop. Um, always a hoot. You will uh, you won't miss it. They hope to see you there supporting a wide range of local artists. Up next, we got Parkscape. It's oil paintings by Teresa uh, Garland Warner. Um, Teresa Garland Warner's uh, Parkscape are scenes of Glacier, Utah, Wyoming, Tenton's Bryce, Zion, Grand Canyon, Banff, and Jasper. And just so you guys know, this isn't a photo that you're looking at. This is an oil painting that they painted. But if you look far enough, you can even tell. Just so you guys know. Um, and this is a, uh, here's the thing by the artist, um, Teresa Garland Warner. Uh, she considers it a privilege to live in a beautiful area and be able to uh, immerse herself in the incredible landscape. Uh, in landscape oil painting, the emphasis is to convey a selected scene by means of the effect of light and aerial perspectives while painting on location. 
uh, my hus- uh, her husband and I enjoy sharing um, trips in the national park where they where he does photography and she does paint. Parkscapes is the celebration of this journey. Up next, we got It Came From The Sky. Gecko Designs uh, professional RPG illustrator D.L. Johnson presents acrylic and gouache paintings of wondrous, terrifying, and delightful beings from the skies and beyond. And that's going to be at the Radius Gallery. Just so you guys know, all these events are happening from 5 to 8 p.m., maybe a little bit later, but uh, congruently, every first Friday, art galleries are open from 5 to 8 p.m. for artists. Up next, we got... Candace Hester Clay, and this is a uh, noteworthy paper and press. You can join them September for the upcoming uh, Maker Showcase. Candace Hester was born in Kansas City, Missouri, and studied art at the University of Montana. Over the course of 10 years, she was teaching art. She was a teaching artist residence in over 40 Title I schools in New York City. She also developed art literacy and garden-based programming for youth in Providence, Rhode Island, and Portland, Oregon, all while continuing to produce uh, works of clay, paper, and felt. In 2012, she moved back to Missoula, and she's been doing art ever since. Uh, moving on, um, Velo and Color, first Friday feature, Dana Gallery is doing this. I, I, they have a lot of great art, a lot of great stuff. Um, oil painted thick oil paint acrylic paints all sorts of things um so this is uh let's see this is artist uh, parvin zabitian um caleb meyer is a missoula based artist who paints almost exclusively with palette knives and uses not only montana's beautiful landscapes as inspiration but also uses the rich culture of rural missoula <laughs> as a lively subject matter so parvin is a seattle based artist who works for mixed media and works with mixed media in creating large dynamic and abstract landscapes full of life and color and you guys can enjoy this from 5 to 8 30 p.m at the Danny gallery um today up next, we got some photo- photography, and this is from South Korea. Lake Missoula Tea Company um, uh, uh, hosts a gallery and a talk about tea. So uh, the, the photographer samplings by Winter Ramos of the vibrant country of South Korea. There will also be slices of handmade local pies for sale at Little House Pies and live music by the talented local vocalist Lindsay Stormo, and then free chilled tea from 5 to 8 p.m. Up next, they got signs of Missoula. So, hey, you see all those signs, you know, you got Reds, you got Oxford, all that stuff. Uh, there is, there was an artist here in the city of Missoula. It's part of Unseen Missoula. Um, Missoula Historic Preservation and Unseen Missoula will be showing original sign artwork for over 50 of Missoula's most iconic businesses and places circa 1940s to the 80s. See vintage signs rendering from the Florence Hotel, Highlander and Missoula Brewery, Fox Theater, the Mercantile, Reds Bar, HO, and many more owned from 1975 to 2000 and works sub- subsequent owner Epcon until she retired. Uh, let's see here. So Missoula's own ha- um, sign historian, Linda Lennox, will be presenting all the signs of all this, which took place, of course, um, I'm, I'm reading this out of order. So um, you get to learn about all the signs, all the famous signs out of Missoula and meet Linda Lennox, and to, who talks all about the signs that are in Missoula for all these years. Um, up next, we got the Frontier Space. Uh, Frontier Space will be uh, showing the works of Krista Carlton for her show, If I Repeat It Enough, times it will go away um so it consists of uh letterpress silk screen and woodcut prints with the opportunity to bring print home that night as well um next we got uh, at la stella blue kelsey walsh um this is going to be um her collection montana summer is inspired by natural beauty of mountain lakes and rivers of her home state montana uh she paints was what she loves up next there's a lot of art there's too much to see, and there's a lot to do. American Made Tattoo, it's all about the water. Um, painting landscapes, especially with water in them. The, um, this is by, let's see. It doesn't say. I thought it would be, uh, uh, but this is going to be American Made Tattoo. And, um, yeah, they're g- it's landscapes, especially with water in them. So you guys can enjoy that at the American Made Tattoo. I'm sorry, I didn't, I wasn't able to get the name. That's weird. Um, Our Vanishing Future, photographs and illustrations. At, this is at Murphy, jo- Murphy Jub Fine Art. Our Vanishing Future, f- uh, photographs and illustrations is a collaboration with uh, featuring the works of nine professionals, wildlife photographers, and an award-winning K-12 youth artists from the 2017 Saving Endangered Species Youth Art Contest. And that's what's going to happen at the Murphy Jub Fine Arts Studio. Uh, then we got uh, Kathy Weber is happening 
over at the Mizzou Art Museum. Uh, first Friday will feature Kathy Weber, uh, Overstory, Understory, a gallery we'll talk with the artist at 7 p.m. Mizzou Art Museum is usually good about having the artist do a special talk, talking about her art, and you guys can enjoy uh, MAM engaging exhibits for free on First Friday every month from 5 to 8. And of course, uh, Mizzou Art Museum is free admission, free expression, always all the time, so you can check the hours at any time. But why not go there on the most popular night to enjoy art? Up next, we got Natural Encounters, Elos Jeter and Bob uh, Finney, um, Gallery 709 inside Mar uh, Montana Art and Framing, uh, 709 Ronan Street, um, that's why they call it Gallery 709, inside they're doing Natural Encounters. Um, it's going to be fill, uh, mono prints first Friday. It's going to be from 5 to 9 p.m. So if you guys are pretty much done around 8 o'clock here, you can jump on down and you can join them there. And you can find out more information by going to MontanaArt.com. we got three more artists. Um, first Friday show, uh, Conflict and Peace in Columbia. So join us for free snacks, drinks at the Jeanette Rankin Peace Center. Um, the lives of Colombia's indigenous communities, their art, their lives, and their struggle for peace. In Colombia, more than 400 social leaders have been killed since 2016. The people there, many marginalized indigenous tribes, are fighting for their way of life and peace for their people. Um, so, Jorg uh, Andre um, from Colombia spent the summer in Missoula as a Humphrey Fellow uh, at the University of Montana. During his time here, he, collect he connected Missoula with four of tribes out of Colombia, um, the Embera, Wayu, Sinu, and Kugu peoples. So those are some of the tribes that will be represented at the Generic and Peace Center tonight. Touched, an installation by Chris uh, Drobnock. Crowley Studio of Missoula is hosting um, Chris Drobnock, uh, which will be doing a um, as we try to make sense of the world around us and view everything against something we have already seen or experienced, Chris seeks to create a novel experience from using clay to refabricated objects that exist in everyday life. And that's going to be happening at the Clay Studio tonight. Um, the last one, this is a MTFF, Montana Film Festival at the Roxy Theater, is going to have a program announcements for the Montana Film Festival. They're going to give you a lineup. They might give you a tease of what you guys can expect for the Montana Film Festival that will be happening in 2018. Um, Montana Film Festival passes will be on sale and volunteer signups will also be available. So those are some of your art, your art guide. It's long-winded, there's a lot of art going on and it keeps on getting longer every first Friday, but you guys can enjoy it. It's gonna be the last couple few nice days for first Friday because as soon as we get into October, November, we're gonna see, start seeing some sweater weather, maybe some rain jacket type weather going into the winter month. So today might be the last really nice day to sport your shorts or jorts, whatever you wear, just as long as you wear something uh, at, at your first Friday events. So I'm gonna end this with a nice art clip from the Missoula Art Museum. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Events. Hey, um, if you're not too interested in doing First Friday events, you might be interested in checking out some other things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula. And as always, 
for your morning. Missoula Public Library hosts Storytime and Tiny Tales to help your kids get engaged with reading at the Missoula Public Library, all starting at 10.30 a.m. All your favorite indoor sports arena type deals, uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Missoula Gymnastics, and Rich Sports Center stuff is all happening this morning. Um, they also have an afternoon thing as well. Spectrum Discovery Center opens at 11. They're going to be doing synthetic biology and virtual reality fish eye experience. That's a mouthful, and you guys can check it all out starting at 11 at Spectrum Discovery Center. Yarns and watercolor, hey, it's art day. Why not enjoy some art, or you can knit with yarns um, starting at 12 at the Missoula Public Library. Cribbage and Bridge, Missoula Senior Center, hey, you just want to play some games, hang out at the best dance floor in the city of Missoula, hey, they, that's what they say, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, Missoula uh, Senior Center at 12.30 uh, around lunchtime, you can have some lunch, you can enjoy some Cribbage and Bridge at the Missoula Senior Center. And it's usually about $1.50, $2 to... Uh, donate to participate. Um, homeschool, LWM, uh, homes, uh, Homeschool Activities Fair, Missoula Taekwondo Center is joining for their uh, first ever Homeschool Activities Fair. If you're looking for the Homeschool Activities uh, for your child during the 2018-2019 school year, look no further. You can join them September 7th, 1 to 3 p.m. this afternoon, and your chance to see all Missoula has to offer homeschoolers. Also get uh, help with homeschool related questions um, intended for homeschool forms and annual records. So if your kids going to homeschool, you might, you know, meet and greet with other people who are going to homeschools um, and just kind of talk about what kind of opportunities there are beyond um, Missoula Taekwondo Center. And then admission is free. Um, teen Writers Group, 3.30 p.m. And it's a good way for teens who are writers who are looking to uh, improve the writing skills, get some uh, positive, um, constructive criticism. Maverick Brewfest, Karis Park, the 20th annual. There's a lot of annuals going around here. And why not continue that with the 20th annual Brewfest featuring 40 microbrews, wines, and Missoula food trucks, live music by Dan Henry Band and Rough Nut Wines. And it starts at 4 p.m., so kicking off your first Friday. Um, Missoula State Hemp and Cannabis Festival. Uh, they used to do at Karis Park outgrew it now it does it at Lolo Hot Springs Resort so it's uh, a day pass is $20 it's a full weekend it starts on Friday but it goes all the way through Sunday and it's f um, fun for the whole family I guess um, depending upon how you feel about cannabis and hemp uh, headliners for the uh, weekend include uh, Pedo Benton Fortune Youth Soul Seed uh, Simple Creation Humdum Draw Sista Otis Yellow Stoned, Dodgy Mountain Men, Baby Tiger, Locksaw Cartel, Larry Hirschberg, uh, DJ Enzymes, and many, many more happening th this weekend at Lolo Hot Springs. YMCA, Back to School Bash. YMCA celebrate the start of school with food trucks, games, activities, free salamander concert, plus join September 7th, and they will get you a month of September free. Um, the Missoula Wise Back to School Bash will be held at 3000 Russell, South Russell Street from 5 to 8 p.m. It must be at their location at the YMCA. Um, joining fees still apply, just so you guys know. Date night, Currents Aquatic Center. This is a good transition into uh, First Friday as well. You want to drop your kids off at Currents Aquatic Center. They have activities and swimming for them uh, for ages 7 and up. No one younger than 7. And they have Currents for a supervised fun and pool and a pizza dinner. And the fee is $15. Flat rate. It's pretty good. Uh, it's every First Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, Project Tomorrow, Montana First Friday Mural uh, Reveal at 5 p.m. Alley Wall between Redbird and Catalyst. Um, they're going to be revealing um, the new mural that will be happening there. So if you ever walk by the alleyway between the Catalyst um, and the Florence, um, uh, Redbird and the Catalyst. So it's basically the Florence building and uh, where the Catalyst is. And you'll see the... Uh, mural. It's, it usually is very beautiful, and they're going to be doing an avail unveiling at 5 p.m. tonight. Mud Project Annual Garden Party, Missoula Urban Demonstration Project. They're just doing a garden party, and this is going to be at their Wyoming st Street location right next to Home Resource, and it's going to be at 6 p.m. Family Friendly Friday is at Top Hat from 6 to 9 p.m. If you guys are interested in finding out more about your Friday events, you can go to MissoulaEvents.net is your source for everything Missoula. I'm going to scroll on down here, and we're going to see some of the late night Friday nights. events. See, there's a lot of events happening in, in congruent, congruently in conjunction. Conjunction? Yes. It's going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it's happening along with your Friday events. John Roberts uh, Pan Blanco is going to be at the Dark Horse Nightlife Disco 
and house music at the Michi Ramen Bar. So that's the new ramen bar that's located uh, just bef below the sushi place, Sakatumi. Um, Mutsai Charlie is going to be at Union Club, and Dusty Pockets is going to be at the dark, dark um, is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. Um, it's going to be some rock jazz music, so you can enjoy that. All right, I'm going to skip ahead. I'm going to jump right into Saturday because there's a lot of Saturday events happening as well. Saturday, Farmer's Market from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. This goes on pretty much uh, most of the early fall season. They'll start stop doing it sometime in October, so you still have a, a month and a half until the Farmer's Market is pretty much wrapped up. Namaste's of Yoga, Montana Annual Yoga Festival, Mask Studio hosts... Um, 15 different sessions uh, starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, the Vibrant Yoga community has special connections, and we aim to further cultivate the special relationship we have with Big Sky Country. Hellgate Roller Girls um, are doing a Derby Bruised Beggars. Um, Orange Street Food Farm, Hellgate Roller Girls will be there begging your groceries from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. to help raise money for the Hellgate Roller Girls. Um, as a fundraiser, uh, the team will uh, be a full derby attire, bruises and all, while they beg your groceries. All proceeds benefit Hellgate Roller Girls. Trucker Kids at Traveler's Rest Candle Making. Hey, Traveler's Rest is a great way to get your kids engaged with outdoor, um, kind of homesteading lifestyle makings. Um, Traveler's Rest um, in 1805, and it's a good way to join the 213th anniversary of the Corps' first stay at Traveler's Rest to make your very own beeswax candle and learn about how Lewis and Clark saw after the dark. Moon Randolph Homestead are doing tours from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. anytime most Saturdays. Uh, soon they'll be asking for uh, help to help pick apples during their uh, cider days. And, of course, Fort Missoula uh, Regional Park will be doing cider days coming up pretty much towards the middle and end of September. So you want to look out for that coming up as well. Hey, you can't miss it because uh, this weekend uh, is pretty much going to be controlled by Grizz Football. So Grizz Football, they're going to be taking on the Drake Bulldogs out of Demo Des Moines, Iowa. So Washington Grizzly Stadium hosting the football game um, against uh, Drake Bulldogs. Missoula Outdoor Cinema, we're skipping way ahead to that night because as soon as Grizz Football takes over the city of Missoula, there's really nothing else going on according to Missoula Events. Um, uh, Missoula Outdoor Cinema, uh, they're going to be doing free movies uh, and they do a five to a 15 to or $10 donation for families. Um, they're always looking to raise money for the uh, North side uh, cinema. Um, let's see. I think the movies, I don't know what movie they're doing. They, they usually post it on here as well, but it might be one of their last outdoor cinemas of this year. It's going to be at the, uh, uh, the Head Start School starting in at around 8 PM or when the sun sets. So that's what's happening there. But, I have to talk about Sunday because Sunday is doing the 14th annual Peace Festival and Walk a Mile for Peace. Starting at 9.30 a.m. in Arlie at the Iwam Garden of 1000 Buddhas. Um, it's happening from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Sunday. Iwam Garden of 1000 Buddhas in Arlie, Montana. Uh, they're going to be doing all sorts of things. Walk a Mile for Peace. Um, you can find out iwambuddhagarden.org for more information or you can go to iwam.com. Org. It's E-W-A-M. This year's theme is Landscape of Peace, the Power of Goodwill. Um, and also, Missoula Center is doing a Swedish pancake brunch. That doesn't hurt. That's pretty cool. Bikeapalooza. Yes, Sunday Streets is happening on Sunday, this coming Sunday, and it's starting at 11 a.m., kicking it off with a Bike Palooza, which will be a five-mile fun bike ride uh, through uh, the city of Missoula. Bike Ambassadors will host this ride um, that will end the Sunday streets kicking off at 12 noon. So from basically 12 to about 4 p.m., um, the downtown um, Higgins will be completely closed off. So don't plan on driving past Higgins on Sunday. Higgins, you, there'll be, uh, you'll be rerouted on detour, so you have to be aware of Sunday streets, which will be happening pretty much from all the way from the Red X's all the way past and across the uh, river itself. So you may want to plan your ca uh, route accordingly this Sunday from 12 to 4 p.m. on Sunday. So there's a lot going on. There's too much going on, and there's just not enough to talk about it because um, <laughs> this isn't – I don't like this to be a, an, an events calendar kind of show. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to learn more about the events, because this is only a tip of the very uh, large iceberg, MissoulaEvents.net. Hey, what's going on in Missoula? This. Just check this out. You can find out whatever you need to know, MissoulaEvents.net. Um, yeah, but that pretty much does it for me. Oh, one more thing. 
uh, MCAT is uh, has brought back our Saturday drop-ins. So every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. for only $10 per kid, um, kids age 9 to 13 years old get to experience some media. So the uh, media arts, creation, stop animation, uh, it's a fun activity. We got a lot of repeated kids really excited to come back for this as well. So we're going to be doing it every single Saturday, excluding some holiday weekends, just so you guys know because it's a holiday weekend. Well, we have lives too. Um, every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Hosted with me and my compatriot, Neil Wells, who will be doing um, Saturday drop-ins every single Saturday. So you can enjoy that and more um, by going on to MCAT.org to learn more information about that. So without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. I'll see you next Wednesday for your city council report and a brand new dub and stuff. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Have a good rest of your weekend as I stall for this music. Thank you.